My name is Natalie Carbone Mangini. And I kept a Carbone because uh, I'm proud of being a Carbone. <laughs> I was born in August 24th, 1928. And uh, my mother always kidded me and said I was coughed up by a wheel when we, when we were little. <laughs> my father's name was Natal J. Uh, Carbone Jr. And uh, my grandfather made all the boys in the family become barbers because he was a barber and they all learned how to cut hair. And my dad was really good at cutting hair. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. My mother's name is Mary Skodak. And when they got married, she always told me that between the two of them, they had a quarter. <laughs> Barbering profession wasn't getting, wasn't too profitable at that time. And uh, my grandfather said to him, why don't you open up a tavern? And my mother came back and she said to him, I thought it over and I, I will help you with the liquor license, but this has to be a restaurant. I will not raise my children in, uh, the influ under the influence of a beer garden. And that was in 1936. And then 1938 was when he decided to open up the restaurant. I was only about eight or 10 years old. And every day after school, I would spend a couple hours there. My brother and sister and I, we all worked. Everybody worked at the restaurant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in 1973, we built the new restaurant. We seated about 500 people in it. Uh -huh. So, uh, and it was a big project. <laughs> when I was about uh, 10, my mother got me in for Christmas one year a uh, chemistry set. And in those days, the chemistry sets had dangerous stuff in them. And you could make fireworks, you could do things like that. And I used to do all kinds of stuff like that. I burned holes in my mother's rugs and stuff like that. When you're a kid, you like to do the dangerous ones. And that's that's what the ones that I would do. And they had that, that kind of equipment in there. Nowadays, they don't even sell that kind of stuff in, in the chemistry sets. Uh -huh. mm. well, grade school was fun. When, when I went into second grade, the, the room was a one-room schoolhouse. They used to be three buildings, and they each, each held so many grades. And the one grade had second and third, and I was sitting in second grade. And after a week or so, the teacher said to me, uh, Natalie, I want you to move over into this row over here. And I, so I moved into that row over here, and that's how I was moved into third grade. <laughs> she decided that I was... I, I, I wasn't going to learn in second grade that uh, I needed third grade. So I skipped a grade, and that's why <laughs> it was funny. I loved to study. I loved school. And my mother tells me the story about when I first went to uh, Unity Township. It was in fourth grade. And uh, I came home the first day of school because in fourth grade we, we started learning uh, – geography and history and stuff like that. And she said, I came walking in, and I must have had my arms filled with books. And I said to her, I says, Mom, look at all the stuff I'm going to know. <laughs> she said, I never forgot that. She said, you carried all those books home <laughs> just to show me. And uh, But my mother and dad were very, uh, very good people and very understanding and uh, they knew I liked to read and, and, and stuff like that and, and uh, I would um, like at Christmas and stuff I would get a stack of books I, I didn't care about dolls and stuff like that and uh, my mother said she never had to worry about stuff but what to get me if I, as long as I got a book or something I was happy uh -huh. I went two years to uh, Greenberg Salem High School and then my mother for some reason or other decided that I should go to St. Joseph's Academy which was a girls school <sighs> maybe she thought I needed refinement or something because uh, they did teach things like that etiquette and stuff like that it was that kind that kind of school and uh, actually when I graduated uh, from high school there was only th about 35 people in my class because it was a small school 
and uh, I went there, and uh, uh, it it was it was a very very good school, and I have some very good friends that I still talk to and uh, correspond with. That I went to school with there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then after that, I went to Seton Hill for four years. Mm -hmm. They were very understanding, and uh, at at the time when I was young, people didn't go to college, and they and when I said that I I would like to go to college, they they agreed, and uh, there was no question about it. I went to Seton. I went to Seton Hill. In those days, most girls didn't go to college, and uh, in fact, some people thought I was becoming a nun when they said, "Oh, she's going to Seton Hill," because it, it was a. Uh, they had. Uh, they were. They did have nuns up there uh -huh, that they were teaching to. Well, actually, when I went to college, I got a Bachelor of Arts in Chemistry because they didn't have Bachelor of Sciences at, at Seton Hill. But they had, uh, I took a math and a physics minor. Those were the two subjects that were hard for me, so I wanted to learn about them. That's, that's why I took them. I, I, I thought they were difficult. So I, I mean, uh, like, languages came easy to me, and... Uh, I didn't want to be a language teacher or something like that. So uh, chemistry and physics were something. They were a challenge. And I liked the challenge. That's why I became a radio chemist, because I didn't know anything about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my friends were, were more interested in uh, getting married or uh, becoming teachers or nurses, because... Those were the jobs that were offered to uh, uh, them. I mean, they weren't, they never even thought of being a chemist or something like that. Uh -huh. I wasn't worried about getting married or dating or doing stuff like that. I taught chemistry to nurses. I was doing research on turtles. And then after that, I, I got a job at Westinghouse and I worked at their my Carter di my, MICA division. And what we did was, uh, tested my, uh, mica for uh, uh, insulators uh, on, the, on the electric wires lines and stuff like that. And uh, uh, someone told me about that uh, Bettis was hiring and why didn't I send my resume there? And I said, uh, I really was bored with the, the job I had at Westinghouse. It was tedious and routine and anybody could do it. I sent my resume in, and they called me in for a job. And then after about five years, they told me that uh, when they got my resume, they didn't read it that well, and they thought I was a man. And they said, when they saw me sitting there in my Seton Hill, out, Seton Hill we were quite close, and with my gloves, my purse, and my hat, and everything like that. They says, oh, my goodness, it's a woman. What are we going to do? I had, there was two men who were interviewing me. And they said, well, we have to interview. We can't send her home. So they interviewed me, and they offered me three jobs. One was in analytical chemistry, and one was in radiochemistry, and one was in spectroscopy. So they offered me the job in analytical chemistry, and I told them, no, I wanted the job in radiochemistry. If, if I didn't get it, I, I was happy. I would just stay where I am. That was it. So I went home, and then two days later, they called me up, and they said, you have the job in radiochemistry. But I didn't know anything about radiochemistry. We never studied radiochemistry in school. And uh, I thought, well, I'll just learn as I go along, and I did. <laughs> I took a lot of courses at uh, Carnegie Mellon then because they were starting teaching radiochemistry there, and that was... Ten years out of my life, and I did did a, a whole lot of work there, <laughs> and enjoyed enjoyed every minute of it. Mm -hmm. Bettis was a, a a secret plant that was working on nuclear chemistry. Was working on the uh, reactors. The government came out and and uh, checked on me, and I had to get a key clearance to work there. So I mean, it, it's it was a. It was a plant that was doing secret work during during that time, during the Cold War and all that. 
I liked the people, and it was something new that no one knew about. And so I was learning along with everybody else, and it just was fun. It was fun. Uh -huh. it, was, it, was, it was a challenge. Like I said, it was a challenge, and I liked the challenge. I mean, actually, I fell into this, but radiochemistry was a wonderful place to work with because our job was to use radiochemical techniques to solve other people's problems. So what would happen is, like, metallurgy might be having a problem. So they would call up us and say, we're having a problem with this. Can you do anything to help us solve it? And so one of us would go down there and uh, talk with them and see and, and and help them out. We would we would be the reactor division would call us, uh, physics would call us. I, I just got to do a lot of things because we didn't have any special thing we had to do. We we just solved problems, so we got to go all over, and it was a nice thing to do. Uh huh. Not the only women in Westinghouse, but I was the only woman, woman scientist who worked on the Nautilus and, and things like that. Oh, I never, I never even noticed. I mean, I, I just, I did my job and I liked my job and I just kept on going. I, in fact, it wasn't until years later that I realized that I was the only woman around because uh, I was doing things and. Like I said, I just did what I had to do. The men that I worked with didn't seem to worry about that I was a woman. They considered me an equal. Mm -hmm. Except one thing they would do. They would all come in and tell me their problems at home. <laughs> I would be working in the lab and they would tell me, oh, my wife does this and my wife does that, blah, 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 blah. And you have to... It, it agree with them, but you didn't give them any advice. <laughs> well, we were working on reactors, and they were going to put a, the reactor in the Nautilus. So that's that's how I got to uh, uh, work on it. And we were working on a, uh, a a product to find out if there was any radioactivity in the coolant water of uh, the Nautilus. And so we developed procedures for that. And the Nautilus was an important thing because uh, submarines before that had to come up every so often for air. But uh, with the nuclear submarine, you didn't need to air, and you, you could uh, stay, under, stay underwater for a, a month or whatever, whatever you needed. And uh, you didn't have to come up to refuel and to get more air and stuff like that. So that, that's... That's why it was important. I guess the whole time we worked on, we worked on the Nautilus and we worked on shipping port, which was the uh, use of uh, nuclear powered, of uh, nuclear power to uh, make electricity, and we worked on that, and we 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 worked on several other things. Anything. Uh, they were even trying to work on a airplane that would be nuclear powered, but never worked out. But I mean, there was all kinds of stuff that, that uh, we we did. Mm -hmm. I can't talk about all the things, so it makes it a little bit difficult. <laughs> and some are still classified, and I'm not sure what's been declassified, but uh, I always err on the side of caution. <laughs> I was selected to go on board for the initial dive. And then the Navy was there, and they looked at the name, and they said, N. Carbone, he, they said, he, she said, I think that's a woman, isn't it? And my boss was there, and he says, yes, it is. He says, well, she's not going on because we're not putting any, there's no women on, on, the, on the ship. So, and they didn't have women on, the sh on, the, uh, on any of the atomic submarines until several years ago. The now, now they will let women on. I mean, you know, everything's changed. So, but they will let them on now. But at that time, it was uh, considered, I don't know if it was considered uh, inconvenient or Ill, illegal or what, but they didn't allow women on. <laughs> 
the one thing that uh, the Nautilus uh, did was they circumnavigated the pole under the ice, ca- under the polar ice cap, and no, n- no submarine had ever done that because they couldn't. They would have to come up for air, and but since they didn't have to come up for air, they could go, go around, go through, through the polar ice cap, and then they came into New York, and when they came into New York, New York had a ticker tape ticker tape parade for them and uh, uh, it was very fancy and um, Westinghouse sent a, a con- contingent up for the all the festivities and stuff and I happened to be chosen to be one of them to go up and uh, when I did go up I uh, was had a, oh, a wonderful time I was on the Dave Garraway show uh, what's my line? A bunch of other things, and it was interviewed on. And uh, I didn't. I, I was supposed to go on the Nautilus then, but I had to go to these other places and do these interviews, and I didn't get to go. So I didn't get to go to the Nautilus at that time. So the the only time I ever went there was when it was decommissioned. <laughs> at that time. Uh, I got a lot of publicity. I was given the Amita Award and the Mademoiselle Award, and I was in Mademoiselle at Magazine, and uh, they picked out 10 women who were important in different fields. I mean, like in art, music, and uh, uh, politics and stuff like that, and I was picked out for for science. So, uh, and I, I, got a, I got a medal from... Uh, uh, the magazine, and I was put in the magazine itself. And also, uh, oh, I was in Time Magazine, too. They uh, wrote an article about me, and, and I've had a lot of, a lot of publicity that uh, I didn't realize that it was so important to have the, I was so lucky to be the first one. <laughs> I was excited to be on the What's My Line show. Well, I have to tell you, I was working as a waitress at Carbone's all the time because I did waitress work forever with the, with the restaurant. And uh, these people these were down in Miami, and they were swimming in a swimming pool, and they were watching TV. And I came out, and I signed to register Natalie Carbone Mangini, and... Uh, the woman who was swimming there, she says, "Oh, I know her. I know her line. She's a waitress at Carbone's." And uh, then when they found out that I was actually a nuclear chemist, they couldn't wait to come back and holler at me for being for not telling them that I was a nuclear chemist. And I, <laughs> I said, you, "You just don't say here I am a nuclear chemist." After all this happened. I got a lot of fan mail. I was surprised. I got letters from people all over the uh, the world because I did. I don't know how. Uh, I guess the news companies are desperate for news and they use anything they can. And they 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 must have had me uh, in different places. And uh, I even got a letter from a Nigerian prince. And uh, he wrote, to, and, and I answered him, and uh, but nothing ever came. <laughs> so I worked as a waitress from 18 years old on, and I, I worked uh, the whole time. I worked uh, when I was 50. I was still working as a waitress. I uh, I helped the restaurant. That, that's what that was one of my jobs. I worked during high school and college, and even uh, when uh, oh, when I had my family, I would get a babysitter every Saturday night. And uh, for my, I had four children at the time, so uh, I would uh, uh, be a waitress on Saturday nights, uh, Friday and Saturdays. And uh, my, I think my kids were happy that they had the. The, I had really good babysitters, and uh, I think they were happy that their mother was gone and they, they got to play with the babysitters. 
I worked as a waitress when I was working at Westinghouse because I worked at Westinghouse before I became before I had my family, and uh, so then after I had my family, I still worked there. And when they were older, and I still go over there now at uh, now I'm eighty eight. <laughs> And actually, I worked almost every night because our busiest hours were like from uh, early evenings until about 8 or 9 o'clock, and then I would work until about 10. Mm -hmm. So I, I just, I helped everything. I helped with the, with the restaurant. Mm -hmm. No, they were two different jobs, and they were, actually, it was like a wrestling while you were working as a waitress, and it was involved with people and a different type of living, type of work. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed working with my family at the restaurant, and uh, we've, everyone has always uh, worked together, and we've been, we've been a good family together. Mm -hmm. And my mother and dad were very wonderful people. Mm -hmm. But I've done all kinds of jobs at the restaurant, and... Uh, I, I enjoy working there, and I enjoy being with the people. My husband came from Crabtree, and I knew him all my life. And just I, some, uh, I guess people just fall in love every once in a while, and that's what happened there. <laughs> he was very supportive of me. He had a oil company, which I helped him with, and we had it until uh, he died in 1990. And then my son and I took over the oil company and uh, we ran it for over a year and then my son said mom I don't want to do this the rest of my life he says I think we ought to just get rid of the company so we sold the company but it was it was an interesting thing and I used to know all the people around here because they would call us and, and say this is so and so living in in like Hannahstown and we need oil and stuff and I would answer the phone and I would I would do the book work and stuff like that for him. So, <laughs> I don't know. we had a lot of goofy things that I mean we did together, and we had a lot of fun together. And he has a, a nice family, and uh, we still get together every. Uh, we always have a big Christmas Eve party where we have the feast of the seven fishes, and we. Uh, all come together. We usually have about 50 or 60 people because the family has grown and there's all kind of grandchildren and, and uh, uh, children. So uh, we, we enjoy each other. We enjoy the family. We enjoy him. I enjoyed my husband. I enjoyed everything. Mm -hmm. While I worked at Westinghouse, I was organized and, and I knew what I was doing and after I had a family, you're never organized when you have children. <laughs> Anytime you think things are okay, somebody breaks a leg or somebody gets sick or something happens or there's some place you have to go to with them. So uh, it was after that, it wasn't, uh, my life was different. <laughs> but I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the children and I enjoyed them. And I have four beautiful children that... Uh, that um, mean a lot to me. Mm -hmm. I remember reading one time about, uh, I think her name was Cornelia. This woman visited her, and she said uh, she was showing off her jewelry, and uh, she was showing how much, how, how all expensive jewelry she had and everything. And, and then this Cornelia says to her, wait, she says, I will show you my jewels. And she said, come in, children. And that's the way I feel. <laughs> they are my jewels. <laughs> and I always remembered that story. Mm -hmm. I've never wanted lots. I, I wanted to be comfortable. I mean, I would never want to be worrying about where my next meal would be coming from or something like that. But as long as, as, long as I know where my next, next meal's coming up and my children are okay and everything's all right, I mean, you, you don't need all that other stuff. It's just extra baggage, actually.
and you can be happy. And I'm happy. <laughs> I think my main thing is I've always been satisfied with whatever I did. I never wanted other stuff. I mean, when I was a mother, I liked being a mother. When I'm a waitress, I like being a waitress. When I did radio chemistry, I like doing radio chemistry. If, if you like what you're doing, it's not work. It's fun. And that's the way my life's been. Fun. <laughs> they're at a the point now where they're taking co they're starting college. And I told them, don't go into a field because you can make money. Go into a field that you like and you love. Because if you love what you're doing, it's not work. And you'll go to work every day and be happy. But if, you're, if you decide, oh, I think I should be a doctor, if you don't really like being a doctor, then it's misery to go to work. I mean, it's, it's work. It's not fun. So I, I always tell them, make up, think before you decide what you want to be. Mm -hmm. So it was just an honor, and it was uh, was wonderful to to think that uh, I I helped women. <laughs> I helped break the glass barrier, or whatever they call it. <laughs> and after I left, I hired other women. <laughs> so I figured that was good. That showed that they finally found out that we, us women can do stuff. Mm -hmm. I've had like three lives. I was a uh, mother, a nurturer. I worked the, with the restaurant, so I was involved with noodles. And I also was involved with nuclear stuff. So I, I, I've, I've had three lives, and they've all been good, and I enjoyed every one of them. And I hope I've done some good in this world and I hope that's what that's why we're here we're, we're here to do good so I don't know what else to say 